Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to be reviewing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, I recently read this and have seen lots of different reviews on BookTube about this book and decided to do my own. Um, I'm very much in the middle, I've seen some positive reviews of this and some very very negative reviews of this and as I said I'm in the middle so I'm just kind of going to go through the storyline and then um, I will give my opinions, I will try not to give any spoilers and if I do then I will say I'm about to. So the characters in this um, book or screenplay, obviously Harry, Ron and Hermione, then you have um, Harry and Ginny's son Albus, you don't hear about the other two children really at all, they pop in and out a little bit, like they get referenced, but you don't really see them at all in this book, so it's mainly Albus. You then have Draco Malfoy and his son, Scorpius, and sorry I'm just looking at my notes if you see me looking down. Um, you see Harry, you see uh, Ron and Hermione's daughter Rose popping in and out, but again she's not really a major character, um, she's just there for a little bit and then gone. And a new character called Delphine, you also get a few um, of the teachers pop up. Um, from Hogwarts you get McGonagall which is awesome because she was my favourite and but yeah there are also a lot of characters missing from this like you never really see you know like Hagrid or any of the other people really pop up from the old books but then I do understand that because this is a screenplay and it's a book so they can't include all of the characters because that would just be way too much confusing on stage. So yeah, Harry in this book, he is now an adult, he's a grown-up, I believe it starts with him in his 30s and then he goes on to his 40s and this book skips the years very quickly throughout the different stages of Albus being at Hogwarts. Um, Ginny, she kind of pops in and out, not too much of her, it's mainly Harry, um, she does have a few moments. Hermione is in this, she's now, sorry, Harry is now working in the Ministry, he's the Ministry of Defence I believe. Hermione is, of course, the uh, Minister of Magic. She's, you know, running the whole show. Ron. Ron is a very strange character in this book. I've heard a lot of people saying he isn't really like the Ron they remember. He's kind of acting out of character. Um, but again, we have to remember they are adults now, so they are going to be acting differently. They've grown up a lot. We don't really see the years between, you know, them leaving Hogwarts and then suddenly they're adults, we don't really see anything in between and people do change as they grow older. The only thing I would say about him is he's only really there for comic relief, he now is a partner in the joke shop, um, I think he helps run that with one of the Weasley twins, you don't see any of, any of the other Weasley family members in this play. Um, but yeah, he's not really an important character to be honest, I feel like you probably could have written him out completely and it wouldn't have really mattered, he doesn't really contribute much to the story, um, other than being there as comic relief. Which is kind of a shame because I did like Ron in the books, so, but then again we can't like focus on all the characters as this is a screenplay, you have the central characters and then that's kind of it. Um, Scorpius, who is Malfoy's son, he becomes friends of Albus, he's a very sweet kid, he's very nice, their relationship is really beautiful throughout this screenplay. Malfoy, you get to see a lot more of Malfoy's emotions in this book, you know, the love he has for his son is very sweet. Um, I've actually always liked Malfoy as a character, um, I know it's kind of weird because throughout the Harry Potter books he was kind of seen as the bad guy, or the bully in school. Um, but I always kind of liked him and you get to see more of him in this book which is nice. And yes, Delphine, who is kind of a new, his new character, she randomly kind of pops up and becomes friends with Albus and Scorpius. So this book is set first. When you come into this book, it's set in um, you know King's Cross Station. It's is set right from where the last book kind of left off. When you see um, all the adults at the station sending their kids off to Hogwarts for their first year and Albus is there and he's talking to Harry and he's worried, he's like what if I get sorted into Slytherin and Harry's like oh you know you kind of have a choice this and that um, as to what house, it, the sorting hat takes your choice into consideration and he's trying to reassure him and um, this is where this book is set off from and of course Albus gets sorted into Slytherin. Um, which some people found shocking um, 
I don't know, I thought you could kind of see it coming, but I actually really liked this. I kind of liked that a Harry Potter child was sorted into Slytherin. It's different. Um, you know, it does make for a little bit of excitement, and it's realistic. Like, you know, Harry, you know, his two other children are sorted into Gryffindor. When Harry was in the sorting hat, it was debating between him, and there's a moment in this screenplay where I think Ron says that at one point they thought Ginny would be sorted into Slytherin, but then of course she wasn't. She was in um, Gryffindor. So yeah, Albus is sorted into Slytherin, and he's really not happy. He's not a popular child. He finds it very difficult to make friends. His only friend he has is Scorpius, which is Malfoy's son, who is also not very popular. And of course, he's in Slytherin as well. And this is where it kind of sets off and it kind of skips through their years at Hogwarts very, very quickly. Um, just kind of saying, you know, that nothing really gets better. They really dislike their time at Hogwarts. Um, you know, Albus really hates it. He's a very resentful person. He hates Hogwarts. He's not. He has a really bad relationship with Harry, his father. Um, he's just pretty much on a massive downer throughout all of this. Um, I think the only bit of light that he has is his relationship with um, Scorpius. They have a really beautiful relationship, and Scorpius is a really sweet kid, even though things, you know, go very wrong for him, and he has a lot going on in his own life, and um, some very sad things. In fact, he is actually kind of, I don't know, he's almost quite upbeat. Um, I i really liked him as a character. I thought he was really sweet. And as I said, their friendship's very, very nice. And his relationship with his father is a little bit rocky, but Malfoy has a lot of love for his son and is very concerned about him. And, yeah, so basically in this book, um, as I said, Harry and Hermione, they work for the Ministry, the shortened version of this is they get hold of a time turner and there is an event in time that um, Harry is asked to change but he refuses for many reasons. And his son kind of overhears this conversation and decides that he's going to change this event in time because he believes it will make things better. Um, you know, he believes it's the right thing to do and maybe, you know, he's kind of looking for Harry's approval. As I said, they have a very bad relationship. Um, and yeah, so him and Scorpius, they go back in time. They go back in time three times in total. The first two times is to try, the first time is to change an event, but it doesn't work, it goes wrong. They make things horribly worse in the future. When they travel back, you know, they realise they've changed things. They try and go back and sort it, and they make it even worse. So the time they travel back to is when Harry is a child. So, of course, the events they change involve um, things that are happening in that world. So, of course, it involves Voldemort and Death Eaters and all of that business. And they are kind of encouraged by their friend Delphine. She kind of helps them along the way. She is kind of a random character that pops in and um, kind of encourages them a little bit and then disappears. And then she comes back later and you find out more about her later on in the story. Um... And yeah, basically they make things a whole lot worse, and they can't really fix things, and they get stuck in one of the um, futures, and the adults have to come and save them, and basically try and clean up all the mess that they've created. So, it's a simple plot, which, I mean, I do like the plot. Again, I don't think really, I wouldn't say... You would, ha If you're a Harry Potter fan, I don't believe you'd have to read this book. Like, There's nothing really adding to the Harry Potter world, if you see what I mean. There aren't really any new characters, with the exception of Delphine and Scorpius. And to be honest, I don't really feel like this book is focused too much on the storyline. I feel like the focus of this screenplay is more the fact the relationship of um, Harry and his son Albus. As I said, they have a very bad relationship. There are things that they say to each other that are just horrific, that, you know, no father and son would really want to say to each other, quite hurtful things. Um, there is something that Harry says in this book that a lot of reviewers were kind of outraged by. Like, Harry would never say that to his son, and Albus would never say that to Harry. But 
I don't know because you know when you're a kid and you're hurt you do say stupid things and um, when you're an adult you're you know and you don't know how to cope with things you know adults make mistakes too and they say things they don't mean and you know even in the Harry Potter books like Harry says things I think it's like um is it in the Order of the Phoenix he kind of goes off for, goes off at um, one on Hermione where he says stupid stuff and you know when you're angry you do say things you don't mean so I can actually see them having these arguments and saying these things um, people are saying oh that's unrealistic they never say that to each other well actually in the heat of the moment people say stupid stuff so yeah they could have had those arguments which made their relationship worse and you know Harry never really had a strong father figure um, to help him so it's kind of realistic that he would struggle with fatherhood um, himself so yeah I believe this is kind of all about their relationship um, and if you're not really interested in that then I wouldn't say it's a must have read I'm a Harry Potter fan I'm a diehard Harry Potter fan so I definitely picked this up and read it I actually read a lot of negative reviews about this and um, like literally every single review I saw on YouTube was negative about this book and I heard all the reviews and I was like oh shit I was like really looking forward to this and then I read it and I was like, actually, okay, there are bits in this that are silly, um, that I can definitely see people going like, what? <laughs> um, but then there are some really nice bits in this, um, you, know, concern, you know, concerning the adult characters, I think it is pretty true to what they'd be like now. So I enjoyed that. Um, I did enjoy the storyline. I thought it was well done. For a screenplay, you know, you can't go into a huge amount of detail. I would have loved if this was a proper book. I mean, this screenplay, they probably could have separated it. If it was a book, could have been separated into a few books. Um, yeah, so overall, I think I would give this a... Probably a 4 out of 5. I did enjoy it, you know, it's Harry Potter, I'll take anything I can get in the Harry Potter universe. Um, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, please, your comment, please leave your comments down below. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below. I might do another video going more in depth into the storyline because I did miss out a lot just because I didn't want to spoil it for people. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on this. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it. I would love to see this as a play, actually. Um, the reason being, because obviously there's magic in this book, it's Harry Potter, and I would love to see how they do some of these spells, like they use a polyjuice potion in this book. I'd love to see how they do that on stage. Unfortunately, it's sold out at the moment, so maybe someday in the future I'll get to go see it. But yeah, I would love that. Um, I'm not sure they could make this into a film because I just don't think they could, you know, some of the characters in here. I don't really want to say because I'll give too much away. Or maybe I should say. Okay, one of the spoiler things I'm going to say, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but when they go back in time, I think it's the second time, it features Snape. And I can't really see anyone else playing Snape other than Alan Rickman, so I don't really think I want this to be made into a film other than the fact that it won't be him playing him, and I can't really see anyone else playing that character because he did it so well. Um, so yeah, not, I wouldn't want to see it be made into a film, like some people have said, but I would really love to see the screenplay to see how it's played out. So yeah, before I go on any further, I, that's my review, that's all I have to say. And yeah, thank you for watching, sorry if I rambled on too much, <laughs> and until next time, bye!